Welcome to CSA Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson from the TCP Academy. And for the first time, you're seeing me doing an agricultural science paper. Well, of course, that's my niche. Uh, we're going to be looking at the May June 2021 paper. If there's anybody out there with a 2022 paper, you can send me. Today we're going to be looking at question number six. Look at uh, beekeeping or uh, apiculture. This is, of course, the paper two. Uh, we're going to up right into question number six for you. I will work in the other questions as soon as I have the time to do so and making them available for you uh, as much as possible before the exam. Let's move right into question number six. Question number six. Figure two shows three types of bee found in hive. We have X, Y, and Z. Usually the smallest of a lot is the worker bee. The one there that falls between um, is usually the drone. Really stand out because it's sort of uh, I can say faster than the others, than the others. It's usually easily identified. Well, in is usually this only usually a hive has only one queen and she's usually slender long and pretty much fits the picture that we have here so x is going to be the worker and z of course is going to be the queen and we move on what is the function of a bee but why the one in the middle there we said that was a drone and the function of the drone is to mate with the queen so she can produce fertile eggs it's important to know that the queen can produce eggs without a mate with a drone. However, those eggs are usually infertile. Farmer Asha wants to improve the yield of fruits in her citrus orchard. The extension officer advised her to establish an apiary in the orchard. Suggest to Farmer Asha two benefits of establishing an apiary in her citrus. All right, the benefits are a lot. One, the bee being close to the orchard will increase pollination. If pollination is increased, then naturally we're going to have increased yield. More oranges are being produced at the plant. Another benefit is that a farmer Asher will pretty much be reaping honey, harvesting honey, and this of course will improve the income of the farm. So we're talking about two benefits only. We're talking about income. So we're getting food there, pollination, income. And then there's also the wax uh, to be uh, harvested from the bee or from the apiary. Then there's pollen that we can harvest from the apiary. And also there's royal jelly. So a whole lot there that can be benefit to farmer Asha. However, your exam only asks for two. So make sure in your exam, you answer for only two. Don't try to give all those answers I gave. This is just for training purposes. Farmer Asha realized that beekeeping is a profitable business and wants to increase the size of her apron. She decides to establish additional hives next to a vegetable farm. However, she observed that the yield of Honey from the hive next to the vegetable farm is lower than the, the orchard located than the hives located in the orchard. So just two reasons why the yield of honey in the hives located close to the vegetable farm is lower than those located in the orchard. Now, firstly, he obtain nectar from the flowers produced by the plants. And of course, they use this nectar to make the honey. So if there is not many flowers, then we are going to be having not much honey. Now, the vegetable crop in most cases will not produce flour during their viable productive period. So for that which we are growing them for, usually we don't allow them to produce flour. Now, there are also some vegetable crop that will produce flour. And these are some vegetable crop where we talk about in, uh, between whether they are fruit or vegetable, like tomato 
uh that sort of stuff uh we have like pepper and so on so um we do have some of these that will be producing flowers but the number is usually not as great as it would have been with the orchard crop given the given to the four or owing to the fact that the orchard crop the tree would be much larger than a vegetable crop the surface here there and the amount of flower to a plant of course it would be much greater than it would have been to a vegetable crop so one limitation there for the vegetable crop is that some might not produce a flower to produce that nectar and some those that do produce a flower it will not be as much as it would have been for the orchard um establishment now vegetable crop usually follow a strict pest control cycle which the bees will not find favorable now if the bees are not finding this favorable then naturally they are not going to be in this field as much to collect nectar. And of course, if we are not collecting nectar, then we are not going to be honey. So one, the pest probably, the pest control mechanism could hinder the bee from collecting uh, nectar. Or, of course, the bee itself might just not find this area. Now, this is a big one, and when I looked at the agriculture textbook, I realized that I did not see anything about disease in the textbook. Uh, so I'm just going to be sharing with you some beekeeping disease. Uh, the popular one here is the American fall brood. Uh, I remember doing the apprenticeship program here in Jamaica, and we had to go around and destroy a whole lot of acres with uh, American fall brood. During which time I also came across chalky brood. Uh, we looked at the aurora mite. All those are things that are affecting uh, the health of bee. So while inspecting one of her hives, Farmer Asher observed that many of her seal cells in the combs of a brood box are dark brown and produce a bad scent by odor. Identify the disease from which most likely suffering uh as they are suffering and state the agent that causes this disease now i say here it's going to be american fall brood it's the same thing we call afb and the signs and symptoms are plenty the causative agent of course is going to be a uh, bacteria the big name of the bacteria i don't see i don't think you need to know that at six i'll suggest one management practice Farmer Asher can implement and control the disease. Now, once Farmer Asher realizes that she has this disease on her property, she needs to report it to the relevant authority, whether it's going to be the Environment Ministry or the Agriculture Ministry or it is going to be the Beekeeping Association. It needs to be reported that it can be controlled in all shapes. Form. Usually with American fall brood, what we do is to burn the hive and usually kill the bee with uh, gasoline. So usually it is a fiery end to ensure that it does not spread. Now there are some other things that are supposed to be done so as to ensure that if it is in the field and we don't know it is not transferred from one place to another. So we should not use equipment that are used on other farms, on our farm. Neither should we be moving hives or bees from one area to another, like crossing borders, without the, without the approval of the relevant um, environmental agriculture, uh, agricultural group, whichever one, uh, certifying it wherever you are it might be different. So we have to make sure that we have the approval before this movement. So I made mention of uh, actually three pathogens that uh, are three things that could affect the bee. We spoke about the American fall brood. We spoke about the charky brood. And there's also what we refer to as the aurora mite, all of which could affect the health of the bee. This takes us to the end of question number six. Ten marks there. So I do hope that if you did know, you have some knowledge now and be keeping heading into here. Please be reminded to like, share, and of course, 
subscribe. We have also here biology and human and social biology. And that whole host of 500 other videos on biology and HSB, along with past paper questions being answered and animation. Thanks much for watching. Until we do meet again, good care.